we've all heard from time to time that the future of our nation belongs to our youth. Actually, God's holy word tells us the exact same thing. It's found in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 22, verse 6. God tells us that we are to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, how well are we doing in that department of training up our children in the way that we want them to go? In 1963, the United States removed prayer from our schools. If we drew a graph, and in that graph we would trace the statistics for disobedience and violence in our children, you would see an ever steady rise in statistics. So now let me ask you a question. If you remove something from our schools, what do you replace it with? The latest replacement is going to shock you just as it did us. We're going to cover that today on God's Unchanging Word in this segment that we call Our Children Under Siege. In the search for truth and biblical understanding, God's Unchanging Word offers unique insights into the issues of our day, covering news here in America, to news in the Middle East and around the world, events happening today that will fulfill Bible prophecies tomorrow, expounding topics from evolution to the very existence of God, from tragedy to inspiring messages of hope and understanding all in the light of the unchanging Word of God. Stay tuned as God's unchanging Word takes you on a Bible-based exploration of the major issues that shape your life, the lives of your family, and those around you. And now your host for today's show, Tom Carey. This past July, the Helena, Montana School Board introduced a brand new sex education program to teach to the youth in that district. It includes all our youth from kindergarten all the way through to 12th grade. The subject matter is going to shock you as it did us. But before I talk about that program and what they're going to talk about, let's go into what God's Word tells us in this program of our children under siege. I want to talk about a scripture where God says what we are supposed to be teaching our youth. It's found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. God says that these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded you to teach, that you might do them in the land wherewith you go to possess. Who does God tell us we're supposed to be teaching these commandments, these statutes, and these judgments to? If we go on in verse 2, God tells us. He says that you might fear the Lord your God to keep his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded you, you and your son and your son's sons, all the days of your life, that you may, your days may be prolonged. Now God's telling us in Deuteronomy that we're supposed to be teaching our children, our youth, his laws, his statutes, and his judgments. God tells us, as he goes on in verse 7, Picking it up now in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 7. And you shall teach them diligently. Are we doing that? Are we teaching our children diligently his laws, his statutes, and his judgments? When you consider the removal of prayer, and now in the last 20, 30, 40 years, the removal of talking about God almost altogether in public places, and particularly in government places, as we remove anything closely related to God, we cannot be teaching our youth. And it's obvious from the crime that's going on in this nation that, that those in this country have a spirit of disobedience that is not being taught from God's laws. Now, let's pick it up again, chapter 6 and verse 7. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. God's telling us from the time we go to bed to the time we get up, we should be teaching our youth his laws, his statutes, and his judgments. How well are we doing in that department? The Mount Helena proposed curriculum outlines sex education in topics on each grade from kindergarten all the way through to 12th grade. And the first grade... In the very first grade, 
Now, now, I want to focus on that, so put that in your mind. From the very first grade that they are going to be taught that human beings of the same gender can love one another. No more man and woman, but, but anyone of the same gender, it's okay to fall in love with someone of the same sex. In the second grade, kids are going to be taught not to make fun of anyone of a homosexual relationship. They're not to be taught on how to talk about being queers or being gay, but to accept them and not to make fun of them. By the fifth grade, fifth grade, they're going to be taught all the different types of sexual intercourse. We're talking about fifth graders. And by the sixth grade, they're going to draft the document for the children will understand the various forms, which subject I don't even feel comfortable talking to you about in this subject right here on God's unchanging word today. But let your imagination run free of what they're talking about, that they want to teach children as young as sixth grade all the various ways that a person can perform sex. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but you ought to be as outraged as most of the parents are in that district and who are trying to stop that program from being introduced. And God's Holy Word tells us that these types of things ought not be. In the book of Hosea, Hosea tells us a horrible warning message that we better take notice of. Hosea 4 and verse 6. God says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He says, Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That you shall be no more priest to me, seeing that you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Those are stunning words that ought to chill you to the bones when you think about the disobedience that's being risen up in our nation and how we continually remove God and people don't want to talk about God and bring it into the school systems where our children ought to be. Now let me just give you a few statistics of some of the things that are happening to our children. Now keep in mind what Hosea just told us. God says because we have rejected him, he's going to reject our children. Report recently, is, is late as 2006, tells us that child abuse is made or is conducted every 10 seconds in the United States. Every 10 seconds. Now this report is four years old and they say since that time it is steadily increasing. So these statistics ought to alarm us. Almost five children die every day. Five children die every day in the United States alone from child abuse. More than three out of four children are under the age of four years old. Child pornography has become a multi-billion dollar industry and is among the fastest growing criminal segments on the internet. In 2003, an international investigation by the police in Germany uncovered a child-based pornography ring that involved, now you ready for this, it involved 26,500 suspects. Now that was back in 2003 and it said things have gotten worse since then. 26,500 people were suspects in this huge ring of child pornography which included 166 different countries. Worldwide pornography revenue in 2006 was estimated at 97.6 billion, with a B, 97.6 billion dollars. Of that, approximately 13 billion dollars was in the United States alone. Every second, every second that passes by, it is estimated that over $4,000 is being spent on pornography. $4,000 is being spent on pornography every second. 28,258 internet viewers are signing on pornography sites every second. 372 internet users are typing in adult search items to find more pornography. And every 39 minutes, listen to this, 
every 39 minutes, and this was back in 2006, a new pornographic movie is being made and promoted in this country and around the world. When you think about the amount of pornography and you look at the stings that's been going on in the financial sectors when people are supposed to be working or on the pornography sites and child pornography and even in the federal government, many of the agencies now that they've caught into pornography websites while they're at work, it's no wonder that our children don't have a chance. When we abuse the children of what's been going on in this nation, God is furious. Child abuse and missing. 797,500 children are reported missing every single year. Now, understand, a lot of these children are found, but literally thousands are never found or seen again. This results in an average of 2,185 children being re missing, reported missing every single day. Every single day, over 2,000 people, children, are being reported missing. Of them, 203,000 of those children, of the ones reported every year, are victims of family abductions. 58,000 of those children are victims of non-family abductions. And 115 children of these victims are stereotyped in kidnapping. People kidnapping the children, abusing those children, and many of those children are found dead on the wayside. God's word in Hosea tells us because we have forsaken him. If we go back to 1963 and the gradual removing of God's holy word from teaching our children in schools, if I drew a graph, that graph would show an ever-increasing rise in crime and disobedience from the youth. You will also find a rise in crime and disobedience to our youth. God says because he's got this hands-off policy because we have rejected him, he will also forsake our children. Here in the United States, we are reaping the results of that abuse today. This program in Montana needs to be stopped. It needs to be stopped before other states try to adopt that and begin to teach our children. And you need to raise up and say, not in our community, not with our children. These things need not be to bring on the wrath of God and to continue raising disobedience by our youth. I want to close this segment today with the, seg with the verse that we talked about at the very beginning of this program. Proverbs 22 verse 6 tells us that we are to train up in the child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. We need to teach our children at a very young age that they need to be obedient to the laws of God. If we are ever to expect any blessings, this nation needs to turn around, pull itself up, and get back into God's holy word.